Shenanigans, working stiffer than mannequins. Vader time like a mannequin. Mega powers, I'm savaging. Peep the babbling, got him shook off the verbal acumen. I'm the main event, meaning nobody coming after him. The topics we be tackling, ankle locking and tapping him. I hate seafood, but I might throw the Boston crab on him. Uh, you know sometimes it gets heated. Uh, you know sometimes it gets heated. Today we have a top five for you. And that is top five greatest matches of The Rock, the People's Champion, Dwayne Johnson. And again, guys, I do want to remind at the top of the episode that this is an opinion-based episode. So you do not have to like, care, or agree with any of our selections. Just be nice about it in the comments. That's all we have. Yeah, don't be mean. We don't like bullies over here. No. Um, well, so we ahead, decided. Scott. we decided the order. And it's going to go Chase, Mike, and then myself. So hopefully we don't have too much crossover. I have a feeling of a certain match that is probably un unanimously on all boards. So maybe. Yeah, I'll probably. Um, well, go ahead, Chase. What do you got for five? All right. So before I start this list, I'm going to say this, and I, I don't know if you guys feel the same way or not. Going through this, there's not a lot of these. Like there's not a really a, – not a, not a lot of really good – rock matches i'm just gonna preface that um so number five for me is a uh, rock versus john cena at wrestlemania 29 um i prefer the second one to the first one i think the second one meant more because they i don't know it felt bigger because it was rock passing the torch this time even though cena was already a guy like a made man so he didn't really need to um but it felt bigger than the first one. It had a lot more buzz. They did a lot more like back and forth promo stuff. And I believe this is the one where Cena called Rock out for the shit on his hand. Um, so that's my number five. Respectable. What? Go ahead. What'd you say? I said that's respectable. Very respectable. I had to have a Cena match. On this whiteboard because I have a marker for it. SummerSlam 98, Rock versus Triple H, the ladder match. Uh, have you guys ever seen this match? I'm sure you have. Uh, Absolutely. This was a breakout performance for both uh, Rock and Triple H. Rock was, you know, the guy with the quips, and he was funny, but he was a heel. But this this match was really good. Seven years to the day in the same arena that we got Owen. Was it Owen? And, no, Perfect and Brett. Not, yeah, Perfect and Brett for the same title felt just as good. Um, I think it gets overlooked a lot because it's not as, you know, there's not the same spots as the Hardys match. But this match was brutal. They were kicking the absolute dog shit out of each other with that ladder. Um, so, yeah, love this match. SummerSlam 98. I remember it very well from my childhood. I love that pick. I completely yeah. forgot that match even happened, to be honest with you. They did. They had a wrestling match with a ladder involved. They didn't really have a ladder match. Like, they were using the ladder creatively for the time, I guess. Um, my number five might be a little bit of a uh, controversial pick just because of the ranking of it. But again, this is my personal opinion. And if this screws anything up for your higher ones, I apologize. But number five for me was WrestleMania 17, Austin versus The Rock. That was my fifth favorite Rock match. Um, What's up, Chase? Say something. That's number one. You're number one. Yeah. Getting, like... I base these right. off of emotional attachments to matches that I watched of The Rock, which was why I have this one at number five. This, in my opinion, was the greatest of all The Rock Austin matches, in my opinion. And again, this was from arguably the greatest WrestleMania of all time, a WrestleMania that everybody got for free because WWE screwed up. Or the cable company. I don't really know who gave it away for free, but the entire world got WrestleMania 17 for free. Um, but Austin Rock, it, it's been talked about to death. Everything was perfect minus the finish. Um, that will go down in infamy as one of the worst finishes of a match for WrestleMania. Maybe in history, it may have absolutely no sense. But this was a super good <clears throat> Rock and Austin match. The promo for this going into WrestleMania 17, Limp Biscuit killed it. Phenomenal. Yes. <laughs> You're the worst. Chase. Uh. All right, so uh, my number four is kind of along the same lines as Michael, but I went with a little bit later in their careers. I went Rock versus Triple H at Judgment Day 2000 in the Iron Man match. 
Um, they, when Rock and Austin got in the ring, not Rock and Austin, Rock and Triple H, it was magical. It worked. It was money every time. Um, Undertaker came back at the end to try to help Rock, uh, but some real, you know, shenanigans Anakin. happened. Some hey. shenanigans. And uh, Triple H ended up walking out of there with the with the belt. Oddly enough, my first two matches are matches that he lost. <laughs> um, supposed to be building the rock up here, guy. Um, but yeah, it was their rock and Triple H is just it's it's money all over on promos in the ring, whatever it may be. And uh, I think this was if the ladder match solidified them as you know, like, quality talent. This match solidified Triple H as a main. Yeah, number four. My number four is The Rock versus Chris Jericho at No Mercy 2001. Uh, this was a big match for Chris Jericho, his big break into the main event scene. It was very risky because The Rock played heel in the build-up to this, claiming that Chris Jericho could not win the big one. Uh, this was Chris Jericho's first World Heavyweight Championship win. He would also put him over down the line at Vengeance, I believe. Uh, but this match was really good. Rock did really well at playing the hill in this match, and Jericho played his part just as well. Phenomenal match, and it shows how great Rock is on the fly, knowing when, I mean, as we've seen recently, when to be the hill and when to be the face. So that's why it's my number four. Love it. Love it. Uh, I'm going to go back to back on controversial picks, given uh, the recent state of things for one of these individuals in the match. Um, my number four is Rock versus Brock Lesnar, SummerSlam 2002. You dick. That's my number two. This, so Rock has been involved in a lot of torch passing moments. Yes. And, and, and this one was up until a few months ago, arguably the biggest because it made uh, Brock Lesnar it was the the launching point for his career to become a top guy in professional wrestling, getting a incredibly monumental victory over The Rock as he departed to Hollywood. And again, I think like this match was really because it, it starts off so fast paced. It was a big time feel match. Rock lays the title down, runs in the ring, trading blows with Brock Lesnar. Eventually, it's overwhelmed. Um, I thought this was probably one of the Rock's best matches. Of it. All right, that leads to number three. My number three is going to be Dwayne The Rock Johnson versus Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 18. Toronto, the Sky Dome. What, it was, it was on steel? It was on fire, brother. That's what you uh, get. The, the, the Canadian crowd, I mean, obviously WrestleMania attracts people from all over the world, but that building was fucking rocking <laughs> during this match. They started, they they essentially turned Hogan in this match. Like, they, I don't know. This was another one of those torch passers where Hogan was passing the torch to Rock. But we got Hogan for longer after that match than we did The Rock, at least, like, full-time on TV. Um, I don't know. Hogan, at this point, he went in. And I think he said that he knew the crowd was going to be, like, on his side. Um, I'm sure yeah, he did. Just absolutely electric atmosphere. You, that type of, everybody wants to have that type of crowd. Everybody. And uh, they got it that night. Your turn. Uh, number three, The Rock versus Kurt Angle, 2001. No way out. Uh, this is a phenomenal match. Uh, this was following a three stages of hell match from one Shawn Michaels and Triple H, and it still lived up to it. Outside of the uh, terrible run-in for Big Show and Earl Hebner screwing up the finish, this was still a really great match, really intense, uh, really took Angle from the, uh, you know, milk-drinking, whiny heel to the wrestling machine we all know and love today. Him having Rock in the ankle lock and say, I'll break your fucking ankle. Such a good spot. Such a good match. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it in a while, I highly recommend it. I'm not going to lie, Mike. I like your list more than I like my own. Number three for me, I went the the first one with John Cena versus The Rock from WrestleMania 28. The once-in-a-lifetime match that we got to see twice. <laughs> I, for me, this was so cool to see because 
it was a dream match for so many people. And the fact WWE was able to put it in the ring twice. The first time was really cool. Second time was, I, I like the second one, but for me, I preferred the first one a little bit better. Excellent pick. What's going on over there, right? Hmm. I choked on my water. Um, uh, my number two <laughs> is uh, WrestleMania, not WrestleMania, Royal Rumble 99, Rock versus Mankind. This one is a fucking whirlwind when you watch it for the first time as a little kid. This this match <laughs> takes... Top five. Did we do a McFoley top five or did we not? Did we? No. No, that was a top five non-Royal Rumble matches. Oh, yeah. But I think right. this did one... I think. I think this one made it too. Okay. Um, yeah, this one as a little kid is kind of disturbing to watch. Uh, Mick Foley gets handcuffed and he proceeds to get mollywopped with that motherfucking chair. What was it like twenty six times or something? He and just like he gave Mick Foley brain damage basically. Um, and there was a sh- shenanigans on the finish again. Uh, mankind never said I quit. That was from a promo the week before. So, like, technically, Mankind and The Rock should still happen, and they should still be working right now, brother. Um, but, yeah, the this one showed that Rock could, like, if he needed to get in a fight, he could get in a fight and, like, really take it to somebody. So, that's my number two. Phenomenal pick. Uh... Saw it earlier. Number two, The Rock versus... Did I say Kurt Angle? I met Brock Lesnar. I don't know why I wrote Kurt Angle. Um, uh, my man's over here talking about it a little bit earlier. Uh, another... Uh, let me also point out a couple things. Another instance, my last one showed this, of The Rock happened to follow Shawn Michaels and Triple H. This was actually Shawn Michaels' return and still putting on a really incredible match, uh, playing heel up to the crowd because they knew he was going back to Hollywood. Um, the Rock bought him into the F5 at the end was... Chef's kiss. That's all I gotta say about it. It's a great match. You guys know about it. Keep it going. Uh, my number two would be. And we've already talked about it, and that is yeah. Rock versus Hogan WrestleMania 18. Look, if if you were gonna ever comprise a top five greatest WrestleMania matches of all time, that match is on it. Was it for the technical wrestling? No, but as you mentioned, the crowd, the atmosphere, Rock and Hogan being smart enough to change the entire match in the ring. Mm-hmm. to accommodate what the crowd wanted. <clears throat> Two of the absolute best workers in the ring from a psychology standpoint. Absolutely loved it. And it's, again, one of the most important and timeless matches in WWE history. I feel like that mania gets slept on as a whole. Like, people That's look it. at... I feel like it does. People look at it, and they really only talk about Rock Hogan. There were other bangers on that card. Um, So, my number one... Scott already talked about it. It's a uh, Rock vs. Austin at WrestleMania 17. Um, probably the greatest WrestleMania of all time, I dare say. And the the end of the match was odd to say the least. Um, to say I don't. That. Yeah, like Austin shaking hands with the devil himself is just not how you want to see Rest. Yeah, not how you want to see Mania go off the air. <laughs> um, but like Scott said, whoever put together that My Way promo video, round of applause to you, sir, because that was mwah, masterful. Um, Kiss that's catch. really all. Yep, that's all I can say about it, brother. Number one. Uh, my, my number one. I think once I say this, you guys are like, oh yeah, that match happened. Um, The Rock versus The Undertaker versus Kurt Angle, two thousand two. An amazing triple threat. I think this is up there in all three of these men's favorite matches. Um, just an, an incredible match. These guys threw everything but the kitchen sink at each other, even trading each other's finishers with each other, stealing each other's finishers. Uh, the Rock hitting, I think he hit the Rock bottom on Kurt Angle, uh, and Taker getting in there just a second too late, so it didn't matter. A brilliant finish to a brilliant triple threat. Um, and let me just say... We never got to see enough of Rock and Undertaker, but one of the best opponents the Rock had in the ring was Kurt Angle. So that's my number one. Yeah, you know, that match was so good. Let's talk about it again. Um, <laughs> as my number one is exactly that match as well. I just, such a good golden age of professional wrestling was that era. 
And I, this is one of those matches that were really going to stand out. I think if you look at that era, that triple threat match, the Undertaker, Lesnar, Hell in a Cell, the Elimination Chamber, and Sean and Hunter at SummerSlam, those would be the defining matches, I feel, of that era of wrestling. And I'll be honest, this might have been Angle's best performance in the ring was with this triple threat match. Um, just, they started at More than him and Sean? That's a I, tough I buy, buddy. That's a yeah. tough buy. More than him and AJ? Don't get me wrong. It's my number one rock match, so I see what you're saying, but woof. Woof. Okay, go ahead. I'll let you have it. I'll let you have it. I just, they started it at 11 and just went higher. Like, this yeah. was such an intense match. And to think this happened on Vengeance. Like, this was not a big four pay-per-view. This was a, uh, a B-plus pay-per-view, if you will. And, again... They all knocked it out of the park. Again, phenomenal match, and I'm probably going to watch it later this week. Yeah, incredible match. I think we all had good, uh, good quality lists here, but I think the takeaway is, we talked about this before, he, Brock wasn't a work rate guy, but that's fine. He, he made money despite that. He had the uh, charisma. He had all the charisma in the world, brother, wearing them silk shirts, driving them Lincolns. And he brought back the vet. The, the, he turned the Versace $500 shirt into a vest. Into a vest. And he's 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 one of he's a kind. full Dominic Toretto right now. He's as seen on this list. This guy knows when to play hill, and he's doing it right now, and he's always yep. been able to do it. Shout out to the Rock, but I hope he never plays Roman. All right, well that's gonna do it for this episode of Heated Shenanigans Podcast. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. And in the comments, guys, sound off. What were your top five Rock matches of all time? Did he even have five for you? Did he only have three? Let us know in the comments. Did he have any? Who knows? So for Chase, Mike, and myself, everybody out there, stay heated, and we'll see you on the next episode.